Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan. With me, as always, talking American soccer is Logan. How are you today, Logan? Well, I'm good because I just saw you choke off air or whatever you were doing. Um, no, no, I wasn't choking. I it was uh, <laughs> I had pushed the button before you had said the rest oh, of your sentence, and yeah. I was like, I'll never know now what he was. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I guess okay, I'm done talking. <laughs> Um, for those that have never used StreamYard before or any kind of streaming service, once we hit like a little, we hit a little intro. Um, I think Jordan does it for editing purposes. I don't know why he does it. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, he hits it and then it, it mutes us, but we go quiet, but we can still see each other in the off studio, like camera. So like the, the thing pops up over us on the screen, but Jordan and I can see behind the scenes of what's going on. And Jordan yeah. just started laughing, and I was like, "It looked like you choked on coke because you're drinking." No, I, I was trying to drink, and then I was laughing, and um, I could I barely took a step <laughs> because I was laughing. So, um, yeah, no, that was um, what what was I gonna say with that? Uh, anyway, a little behind the scenes action there, just so giving behind the, the scenes, yeah, you know, giving the folks out there something to talk about. Yeah, uh, and that oh yeah editing purposes i I also do it for we we were talking about it last week with the millennial polls right i try to eliminate that because once it hits zero i'm able to just like go, you know I, I know where to cut and i know how to make it look yeah. and and sound better and it ha- helps me turn on my podcasting persona because offline i'm always like hello thank you so you know being able to actually know when to enunciate well it's funny that you say that because like every time ashley's ever heard me talk like i i sound different when i podcast and i yeah because i try to get more energy and i smile more and i'm trying to be more energetic um and smile more though because you're like genuinely having a good time with me compared to yeah just life right (laughs) um yeah but you know like when you're talking to your friends or when you're talking to your spouse or whatever it might be you're 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 probably talking and you know, we all go through those times where we're kind of relaxing and we're just talking, chatting, and we're not, there's no inflection in our voices. But if Jordan and I sat here and talked like we normally did, I think it would be really boring, you know? Yeah. I got told I was Uh, monotone though. And Jordan was the exciting one. Did I tell you that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're the one that brings inflection. I was like, what do you mean? (laughs) I'll say you haven't been as mon, you haven't been as monotone. Yeah, I think so I, I think you took that to heart. I did. I, I did. I, you know what it is, though? It's it's it's. And if you're out there, this is really fun to start this podcast it's about soccer. But uh, if you're out there yeah. and you're starting a podcast, I think the biggest thing for me was like, get excited. Getting over that yeah, like getting that yeah. getting that energy. Um, it's easier when I I will say it's easier when I have you on the show. When I do it by myself, there are times I catch myself, you know, running out of energy. But yeah. It's hard to feed off nobody. Talk about feeding off nobody. Um, there's no Liga Mekis teams in this, <laughs> in the semifinals here. All right. I guess you could call them bottom feeders. <laughs> yes, the, the teams that, as I joked on Twitter, we have a new name for League's Cup. It is called MLS League Cup uh, because for the second year in a row, Logan, an MLS team is going to win league's cup yeah i i uh i loved it because i saw it pop up on twitter and i hadn't really thought about it jordan so kudos to you um we were the first out there i think we that did it um but jordan came up with that tweeted out i saw people liking a tweet i was like what are they liking um and then i went over and and saw it and i was like that's pretty that's pretty funny so you're like what is jordan liking (laughs) and retweeting from the state side uh, on the state side account right no we don't we don't do that. We never repost our own <laughs> content. Yeah, never. Um No, but that's that, that's good. It, it is funny uh that that is the case. That's what I was rooting for this weekend, you know, was all right, let's get to all MLS teams. We were talking about what we said last week. I gave a 60% chance an yeah, MLS team was going to win. That's not low. That's more than half. And that that's 60% failing. chance came true uh, get that out of the teacher mindset all right out of the teacher <laughs> mindset. it's a D i never minus. understood that anyway like yes yeah, they all changed that's right more than half that's right. more than half he passes right yeah. um but i said yeah we had a 60 percent chance of an mls team winning this competition and 
lo and behold, we have a hundred percent chance. <laughs> uh, now it was, it was a little hit or miss. Uh, it goes to penalties in two of these games. So those two results could have went either way. And we would have been left with a 50% chance. I would say, because you would have uh, a, a club America si- a team on each side of the bracket, along with another MLS team on each side of the bracket. So in my opinion, I would put that at 50%. Um, I don't know what the real stats are, but that's what my interpretation would be. Um, with this, it is a hundred percent chance now, uh, as we have completely demolished Liga Mekis in League's Cup once again. So, like I said, this is now forever to be known as MLS League Cup 2024, and we'll see if that continues next year in 2025. Um, but yes, yeah, so we had uh, you know Club America losing to Colorado on penalties. We had LAFC beating Seattle. We had Philly beating Mazatlan, and we had. Columbus crew beating NYCFC on penalties. Three of the four games went to penalties, uh, which is actually pretty amazing. Um, and two of them ended 4-3 on penalties. Um, one went 9-8, and that was the Colorado game where uh, Zach Steffen was the hero in that with uh, taking a penalty. Zach Steffen goes up there and, and takes a penalty. Um. Let's back up to the round before that. And we will get to the U.S. men's national team news. Uh, You might see that in the title of the video, but we will be talking about that we may have a manager, Logan. We may have a manager if they can sort out the Chelsea contract. Um, Mercio Pochettino. Poch. The Poch town. Yeah. Yeah, It's coming. Huge news. Maybe. Uh, It's been a big week for... uh, United States soccer, not just the U.S. men's national team, but United States soccer. Yeah. So, um, oh, we also got a friendly announced Jordan in October against Mexico too. So lots mm. of lots of things happening between. Bet you we win that one too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> we should just continue beating Mexican teams. <laughs> the better if it's nation or club, just keep beating them all. But Jordan, and I look, I, I hold on. I, yeah. I do know people are gonna probably say stuff about what I'm saying. Look, a lot of it's in jest. Like, obviously, this tournament is all in America. It's not very. It's not as hard as CONCACAF Champions Cup in that sense of having to go somewhere. But look, these are the rules that Liga Mekis agreed to as well. And I'm sure a lot of them would want to win this cup as well, or else why are they playing in it? So, uh, money. But, I mean, uh, so I do think that... It's fair to say this stuff. It seems like this will be the competition that MLS teams are probably going to win more, and Liga Mekis teams will probably win CONCACAF Champions Cup more, and that's also just in line with when they are both in form in the schedule as well. So I know some people will probably be like, oh, like you're it, here's why MLS is winning all of these. Liga Mekis doesn't care, or Liga Mekis can't host them. And yeah, all that could be true, but guess what? Those are the rules and MLS rules. Okay. Uh, whatever you were going to say, Logan, sorry. I, I think you're, you're right in the point. Um, and then uh, I think it's also, um, it's also needed to be said that we are better when Mexican clubs are better. We're better when Canadian clubs are better, when we're when their national teams are better because it challenges the United States. It keeps MLS, MLS relevant. Yes. I know the Mexican clubs have uh, a larger fan base, but they've also existed for a lot longer than some of these teams. They've been able to uh, gather some of these fans because in the west, on the west coast and in the west side of the United States, you have a lot of Mexican immigrants that come over and they bring that club with them, right? And they are uh, they're raising kids that are fans of those clubs. And really, Jordan Liga Mekis has existed and was probably the first love for a lot of these uh, fans that, that are of Mexican heritage that come over and they're excited about celebrating their home country and everything that goes with it. So um, that's why those fan bases are so large. I think there's a lot of people that like MLS that are that are Mexican or that support the Mexican league, but I think that their loyalty is always going to be to their home, right? It's, it would be the same in the United States, right? If we had a, if we had a club that we like in MLS and then we decide to like a Premier League team, which is the opposite of how a lot of us have done this. But say Jordan, for instance, somebody likes Toronto and they're a Crystal Palace fan, 
then, you know, later on in life, I'm pretty sure that their roots are always going to be in the United States or in Canada or in wherever it might be that these clubs are playing because they are in a U.S. based league. And then second would probably be their Premier League team. So, again, I, I think that's that's important. You can, you can to, equate it to uh, let's let's take baseball. Yeah. All right. Baseball, probably the only other sport, probably the only American sport that is very popular in other countries. Yeah. Basketball as well. Uh, but let's, that's Canadian though, right? Basketball right. is created by a Canadian guy, yep. I think. All right, so we're going to go with baseball. Uh, Abner Doubleday did not actually create baseball. Watch Ken Burns' documentary. Okay, anyway, uh, with baseball, let's say you move to Japan. And I'm an Orioles fan, you're a Cubs fan, mm-hmm. right? We moved to we moved to Japan, and uh, you're like, okay, I love baseball, but guess what? Baseball in Japan uh, is a thing, but also baseball in America, while I'm in Japan, is on at the worst hours of the day. Right. So, I'm going to adopt a Japanese team, and but but my loyalty is always going to be to my first team, right? It's always it's always going to be that first. Uh, that first team. But if I had a kid in Japan, maybe he would grow up rooting for one of the Japan teams instead because that is his local team. So, you know, and and sometimes I pass down that MLB team to my son and that could be the thing too, right? So that's what we're kind of talking about when we're talking about here with like, uh, um, you know, uh, descendants of uh, uh, Mexico fans who come over here and they're like oh club america and then guess what now you're seeing this tournament where they can play each other all the time i still think baseball should do this i actually took uh out of the park baseball the game which is like football manager and i made cups where you qualify like the japanese league winner into like the a tournament with the american winners and all that kind of stuff like, i did that kind of stuff i think i think baseball should do that because it's a lot of fun um there's stuff they should take from soccer. Um, any every sport should learn from soccer. Same thing with basketball. Like I know basketball does have like a FIBA Club World Cup, I think, as well. But oh, angry cats! <laughs> Sorry, they they don't like that idea, Jordan. Um, Sorry, yeah, but we never, um, but but we never send the actual NBA champion over there. I think they send the G League uh, yeah. teams instead. But people will always try to emulate soccer. Um, because it be, makes money right world <laughs> cup um they've all yeah. tried to emulate world cup because it's mm-hmm. so successful the euros world baseball classic uh FIBA in world season cup. tournaments jordan nba mm-hmm. does in season tournaments because of soccer adam silver has said that that the nba first found it very interesting that soccer plays an in-season tournament uh simultaneously with their regular season and in the nba it works because they don't really have the issue with a ton of workload because of the well workload management but also they don't play as many games soccer it's a game of constantly running back and forth for 90 minutes so yeah i know the nba was definitely using that model that soccer has used and are trying to duplicate that here's a fun off-season video topic we we could do is creating our own (laughs) baseball like kind of mixing our sports here creating our own (laughs) yeah dream baseball like season with like cups and uh you know like going up against you know like club world cups and mm-hmm. um U- uefa your you know the uefa um um super cup stuff like that we we should probably uh just have like a fun topic of like bringing the soccer ideology to american sports and just creating our own fictional tournaments like that i think that'd be fun yeah it would be fun um okay so we we said we were going to back up. We're backing up now. We've kind of been scatterbrained for 15 minutes, but guess what? Not a lot to actually talk about when it comes to how many games there are. So that's what you get this week. We were previewing the round of 16 and the quarterfinals last time. So let's recap the round of 16. Club America beat St. Louis. I think that happened... Yeah, that happened uh, after we had recorded last. Okay. Colorado, uh, Colorado had beaten Toluca. Seattle had beaten Pumas 4-0. I, thankfully, Smashed them. Thankfully, I called that. Uh, as we were recording, if you listen to last week, I said, <laughs> I said, 
Seattle already threw on Pumas because we were recording that day yeah. and the game hadn't started yet. And shoo, that aged very, very well. Seattle wins 4 0. They're going to end up losing 3 0 the next game. LAFC beat San Jose 4 1. Philly beat Cincinnati 4 2. I did not see this coming. Uh, I think I even said on that episode, like, yeah, since he's getting through, like, whatever. Uh, so that did not age well, thankfully, as a Union fan. So that was a little bit of a little jinx I was throwing on the on Cincinnati. Um, so that game was pretty crazy. Philly had a 2-0 lead, gives up uh, two goals to tie, and then immediately come back and score two goals to make it 4-2. Mazatlan beats Cruz Azul. I think Mazatlan had like a 2-0 advantage, and then Cruz Azul came storming back, and then they go to penalties, and Mazatlan wins on penalties. Um, NYCFC beat Tigres. I think you called that. Uh, Columbus beating Miami. You were very lucky, sir, because you had said that was going to happen, and Miami, again, had a 2-0 lead. And here <laughs> yeah. comes Columbus winning 3-2. Um, lots of that on, on that round of the round of 16. And that left us with just two Liga Mekis teams going into the quarterfinals. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, what was your thoughts on the on the round of 16? Any any shocking things? Because I think we said we pretty much almost called all of them. Well, I, I and some jokingly, some tongue-in-cheek. But, like, also, I, I mean, I did. I, I feel really good. Like you said on the top of the show that I feel really good about United States or the MLS teams playing in the United States against some of these uh, Mexican clubs that uh, they're they're they've not really been the same. Um, I would say Club America Jordan's always going to be really good, um, and we'll get to them next round. Um, talking about really good, but even they, you know, they they were coming off like a weird break because them and Miami have had the buy right, um, and that did not work out well for either of them. But I, I, again, I think in soccer you really see it. Um, there is a big difference when you have games off, weeks off in soccer. I think there's um, some concern there just of fitness levels and different things like that. Um, but I, I mean, I was I was shocked to see Seattle pummel Pumas, like didn't even let them off the mat, pummel them. Um, Colorado, I've just been really impressed with the way they've really started to take off this season. It feels like they're starting to make that charge where they could be really dangerous in MLS and league play now. Um, because they've had such a successful run in League's Cup. I feel like they're really starting to gel together with all those new players added in and Chris Armas at the helm. Um, America, you know, Club America, I'm not surprised by. You're right. I think the biggest, honestly, the biggest surprise for me, for whatever reason, was Philly beating Cincinnati. And I know that Cincinnati's struggled with defenders going down in Miazga and Hoglin. Um, But I still thought, the union, the way that they've kind of played the season, just kind of that roller coaster ride of a of a season that they've been having. But Jordan, I mean, you're starting to look at this union team going, okay, well, they're really, really good right now in uh League's Cup. Um, how can they compete against a Columbus team that's probably one of the hottest teams in MLS? And what does that do for them this season? But that that honestly was the biggest shock for me was Philly coming, you know, coming to Cincinnati and 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 having that barn burner of a game to beat them for two. Yeah. You know, and those, that matchup's always fun. It's the big brother, little brother um, <laughs> yeah. stuff of Cincy and Philly that they share so much, um, you know, staff and, and, and players even. And that one was really surprising to me too, especially once they went down, once they equalized two, two, I was like, Oh, I think that was, I think that was the chance, but We'll say since Andre Blake has come back into the team and from injury, this team has reached another level. Um, is there a more important person to a team than Andre Blake in this league? No, he's te- he's literally the most valuable player yeah. uh, in in Major League Soccer. Without Blake, right, this team is not not good. I agree with right? you. Yeah. Um, and. Look, and you also have to say, hey, Ty Baribo has been scoring like crazy. That's after losing Julian uh, Carranza. So big, you know, shoes to fill uh, Baribo had. And he comes in um, after dealing with, you know, Curtin kind of saying like, hey, we didn't like his work ethic and training. And he comes in, he starts working 
I guess, better in training, comes in when it's time to come in after Carranza leaves, and he's scoring goals. He's also getting red cards. So he just got two yellow cards in the last match. These ugh, these yellow cards were not really yellow cards, I don't think. <laughs> there was so much diving on the field from Mazatlan, but whatever. That's what we have to – we made our bed. We have to lie in it. And now they have to go without – uh, Baribo, but they do have, a, you know, their new player that they just signed coming in for uh, Jose Martinez. Uh, El, El Brujo is gone, right? He is leaving. Um, his last action probably was that uh, penalty kick that helped send them through. Um, How are you feeling yeah. about that? I know you and I have talked extensively yeah. about off air about it. Yeah, yeah. Controversially, he's. Joe's, you know, Martinez was not one of my favorite players for the union. And I think I brought that up actually on Todd's podcast in 2020 when he first had me on. And there are, of course, times where El Brujo was very good for the team. And you're like, all right, yeah, he's, he's doing it. And then there's times where you're like, what is he doing? Uh, because he's, you know, getting stand- like a lot of cards or uh, – giving the ball away earlier the season when the union were really struggling, he was giving the ball away a lot directly leading to goals. And it's probably time to move on from him. And you know what? He's supposed to be going to Corinthians. That's a big probably upgrade for him. Great. But it's just one of those things where uh, I think he really embodies the Philly mentality that I don't really have in Northern Maryland where I don't feel Philly. So I never really got it uh, type of thing, you know? Um, but you know, that th- that's the, that's the thing. So uh, it sucks. We're losing him because he is so important to the team during a cup run here. Um, but that's, that's the breaks with the way that the transfer window is and the way that MLS structures the league and the league's cup playing during this time. So it is what it is. We'll have to deal with that. Um, but yeah, so uh, look, he, he got a nice send off. He got to go on the field, even with the pending transfer. They worry about him getting injured. He goes out there, you know, runs around for like a couple minutes and gets a penalty. And that's that uh, for El Brujo. And um, the Union uh, end up moving on past Cincinnati and past Mazatlan. And now have to go, of course, and face Columbus in Columbus and have to deal with Baribo uh, being out. Um, but they do have a new signing. I'm blanking. Jean Jacques. On... There you go. There you go. Um, who is going to be coming in, and I think he is available. Um, yeah. So there you go. A staffer um, called him athletic as F. <laughs> That's how he was described. Uh, they said he's a freak of nature. So. It and I, I think right. I read, I, I forget what club he came from, somewhere in France. Yeah. Uh, um, just, nice, maybe, yeah, or just, one of those. I think it was Nice. I just one of those it. clubs. Uh, but I was reading that fans there said he was a really like hard worker. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's, that's going to be good. That's going to probably play into um, his role in Philly as well. So, hey, you know what? At least they signed somebody. They're bringing somebody in. That's all you can ask for. There was a town hall that was going on. You know, Philly fans have not been very happy with the way that the team has been playing. They had a town hall, and it wasn't really just because of the results this year, but a lot of people were very upset, Logan. 2022, the Gareth Bale dagger, right? Mm -hmm. And then seeing no big investment in the club after that. The union were literally, quite literally, one to two pieces away from MLS Cup. They're actually like 30 seconds away from MLS Cup without having to add to the team. And the ownership took the wrong vibes on that. They're like, oh, we made it with this team. We can just keep doing that. And you can't, especially now that Miami's bringing in all these players and stuff. So the fans were upset. They had a town hall. Um, I think it's posted somewhere where people can see it, but they're pretty much like, hey, we're never going to be the team that spends all the big money. And it, it is quite amazing that, you know, when you look at the union's highest transfer fee, it has been eclipsed by most of the MLS teams now, um, which is sad. Yeah, and and again, like you said, they were they were in a window that I felt like they could have rattled off that they could have won 
a Champions Cup. They could have made some noise in Leagues Cup. They're making some noise in Leagues Cup now. But and, and here's the thing, too. Leagues Cup, if we win this, yeah, two wins away. Right. If we win this. Is it bad? Like, I'll still be like, yeah, that was great. But I want to win MLS Cup. That is the pinnacle of Major League Soccer. Like, even if we had somehow gotten CCC, and it'd be like, great, yeah, we won CCC. That's awesome. But MLS Cup is what adds the star to the shirt. That is the the trophy I want the most for my team. And it's just frustrating that, like, Look, I'll celebrate if we win this thing, of course. It's going to be epic, and it'll be our first cup, right? The shield is another thing. But it is just like, damn, we were we were so close. Yeah, but, but if you ask people, like, if you ask people to think about and name people that have won League's Cup in the past, and yeah, obviously it's easy to do with League's Cup right now because there's only been one winner. Um <laughs> But, you know, as time goes on, Jordan, if I asked you who won Supporter Shield the last couple of years, I guarantee you there's some people that can't do it. But if I asked you MLS Cup winners, most could probably do it. Um, there's not a lot of – there's never – Jordan, there's never there's never a time where people come into it and go, you know what, we won the Supporter Shield last year. That means we're the best. It's like, not really. Because people in American sports see the championship – off the end of a playoff from the league standpoint being you are the team that reigns over the league for the next year. We never will talk about this is the reigning supporter shield champion and have that be something that's being discussed constantly. Yes. It's probably in the back of their minds, but it's always the, this was MLS cup winner Columbus crew. This was MLS cup winner. Right. LAFC. We're never saying really that about, anybody that's won the supporter shield because oftentimes the supporter shield winners are not ones winning the MLS cup. So again, like you said, I, I, I think you're right in saying that if we had to rank and you and I have done this, I think some, but if I had to rank what I'd want my club Orlando city to win, it'd be MLS cup. And we should, we should do that again. We, we yeah. sh- at like at, at an actual, like, that's another off season idea, like a tier list of yeah. like, all right, what means the most to you? Right. And situationally, uh, if, too, I guess we could say. Like, there, we could go through each team and say, which one do we feel is most yeah. important? Because I think it's a different, it might be a different answer if for If they just fans. won it, right. right? If they just won MLS Cup, yep. it's like, all right, yeah, not that one. Uh, like, crew, probably League's Cup this year would be like, all right, we did it. LAFC, I would even argue, Champions Cup, because they don't, you yeah. know, they've already won a couple and they lost of the MLS Cups. Yeah. Champions Cup. If I was to ask you off the top of your head, how much you think the transfer record transfer fee the Philadelphia Union have spent? How much would you say that is? Oh. To bring up, probably, uh, it's probably really low. Uh, Depends on the definition of low, I guess. Right, like a because I like I'm like yeah, it is low, but I'm wondering if then you'll go really low. <laughs> Eight million. Oh, you're you're high. Really? You are higher than a kite on that. Yeah, it is uh, $2.8 million. No way. For the union. Yeah, and who is it? Gosdog. No, that was one8 2.8. was Mikel Ua. Oh, gosh. Highest transfer fee for the union. And like I said, many MLS teams, even the lower salary ones, have eclipsed that no problem. Uh, so that's where the fans were having a, a big problem with um, ownership on that. And, you know, it caused a, a town hall thing because they've been, we haven't talked about it too much, but I mean, like, look, League's Cup has been boycotted. Uh, this, the, the stadium isn't as full this year. And it's noticeable when I was watching the Philly game because it was in Philly. And, it, you know, it's a Saturday night. Uh, there were some storms in the area, but whatever. Saturday night. And yeah, like the river end is almost completely empty because Sons of Ben are protesting. And it's like, uh, yeah, that's part of the protest too. It's not just the the open cup stuff. You know, some of it is, hey, like you keep increasing our prices. We haven't seen it go on to the team. And, that, and that's the case for every team kind of getting that. Uh, I feel like, well, I think Seattle fans just had something about their season tickets going up and, and fans were complaining about that. So 
I don't know. It's an epidemic. I feel like Logan, I know things always got more expensive, right? Like I feel like growing up, we always knew like we'd hear the stories back in my day. Yeah. Milk was five cents. And you're like, right. all right, grandpa. Right. But do you feel like it gets more and more expensive faster now? And I'm not talking milk. I'm talking sports stuff. Like I feel like, okay, 2012, I went to the Orioles postseason in 2014 but for 60 but no for 40 bucks i got a seat near the club level it was a little balcony that looks out from there but it's in the club level I'm walking through the club level suites to get to my seat and 40 dollars for a playoff game in 2012 this year it was 60 dollars for the worst seats in the stadium last year uh like what? And then I've even seen it with Philly, where before I used to be able to go to a union game for $18, $20. And now those tickets are $27, $30, $35. Like, I, I, it happens all the time with sports stuff. And like the fans keep every year, season tickets go up. Or every year, the ticket prices just go up. And I get it. We just had Messi enter the league. I don't even think that's a big part of it. But it's like, because I see it in every sport. Here in America, exclusively almost. I feel like yeah. overseas, they still have a good hand on their, have, their season regulations, ticket. regulations, yeah. I, I just don't understand, where is the tipping point? It's kind of like the same thing when I asked that question about when people are upping rent all the time. And I'm like, at some point, nobody's going to be able to live in the house. At some <laughs> point, nobody's going to be able to pay the ticket price you're asking for. Yeah. Uh, and if they do, you're sacrificing atmosphere. Yeah. I, you know, that people argue about this all the time. I mean, we can get into, we can get into economics here and I can tell you what, what is needed is a recession. Uh, that is what's needed. Um, that is, and people are like, what, what do you mean it's needed? Uh, a recession is always needed. It's like a rubber band. Um, that's the way that was always explained to me is that recessions needed because inflation has gone up. Absolutely. Um, everything has been inflated, but it's also the inflation rate is not as high as it once was. It has come back down, but nothing caught up to it. So salaries, what people are getting paid has not yet caught up. Uh, I think it is catching up, but that's going to take time. It takes a couple of years for that to happen um, to slowly progress that way. I do agree with you. I, I think Jordan what a lot of it has or does come down to is ownerships always looking to advance their technology, their, you know, sports medicine, their player facilities. You know, there's a lot of investment now in, in tech. There's a lot of investment now in player health and um, salaries of players have gone up increasingly uh, drastically. I mean, you look at NFL, that's why their tickets are so high is because they've got to play these, pay these players, NBA, same thing. NFL is almost, I don't want us to get to an NFL level. NFL's priced a lot of people out of games. Yeah. Like single games, Jordan. Like it, it yeah. The Miami Dolphins to sit uh, top level in that stadium, it's like 280 bucks a pop. It's like the $600. last time, the last time I went to a, a, an NFL game was a preseason game mm -hmm. because my work gave the, I won them at a work raffle or something. Mm -hmm. Um, that's it. Like I, I have not been able to really, and before that, the last time was 2012, no, 2013 January on the, when the uh, Ravens were going to the Super Bowl, we had one home game, Ray Lewis's last home game that was there that I got a ticket for. It was a hundred, hundred to hundred sixteen dollars for a playoff game yeah. in the nosebleeds. I was looking at tickets this year, this past football season, and they were 200 some for a playoff seat in the same exact spot. Like that's why, like I haven't gone to NFL games. Plus it's also just better watching at home with the way that NFL oh, is yeah, so yeah. stop and start, right. like so stop and start. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's just absolutely crazy how much sports in particular and concerts and all that fun stuff yeah. have just been completely pricing out 
the, the little guys when it comes to having those experiences. And we're starting to see it more in MLS. And we're starting, like, when Messi comes to town and those tickets are $1,000, $3,000. And it's like, no thanks. Um, it sucks I probably won't ever be able to see him play in person, but I, I can't justify that cost, you know? like right. And I don't know how a lot of people are able to, um, you know, you, just with every, how everything is continuing to go up. So it's it's just absolutely crazy. Not what we were supposed to be talking about today. But, hey, um, it's a reality. It's a reality. I don't think it's just boycotts for um, – <clears throat> I don't think it's just boycotts for the sake of the Open Cup. I do think some of this is just – at certain times the tickets are just uh, insane. And you're like, this cup doesn't have history yet, right? It's the second iteration. Am I going to go? I also see some people say like, just uh, for any competition where they're like, am I really going to go on a Wednesday night uh, in the middle of summer? I'm like, I mean, yeah, we, we do for baseball all the time. Like why, why are we at like, that's a hurdle for soccer um some of it could just be that soccer is usually seen as a weekend thing for some fans right and then it could also just be the time it takes to get to the stadium after i like i actually don't go to a lot of weekday baseball games because it is especially now that they've uh lowered the time start time to 6 30 for the orioles Mm -hmm. um that's tough for me to get to after work right i get off at like five o'clock it takes me 30 minutes to get down there, but I also have to like, I would either have to travel home or I'd have to leave from there or, or work from home or, you know, all, all that kind of stuff plays into um, why some people don't get to go during the middle of the week. And if you have kids, it's like, oh, we got to have the kids home from school. We have to find a sitter, all that kind of stuff. So weekends are a little bit more manageable for people. Um, this was a weekend I uh, set of games though, um, which did not have the best uh, attendance. Uh, talk about a millennial pause there. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, so let's preview the semifinals that we have here. LAFC in Colorado. Uh, Zach Steffen came up big with some big saves against Club America. And then we have Columbus and Philadelphia. Both of those games are taking place on Wednesday the 21st, 7.30 and 10 o'clock. 7.30 for the East Coast game, Columbus-Philly. 10 o'clock for LAFC and Colorado. So if we're going to make our last picks here, and then we also got to talk about final, which is on Sunday. Who, who do you have moving on from the West, and who do you have moving on from the East to get to that final? Uh, for the West. MLS Cup rematch here, is that what we're getting? Yeah, I th- might even get it this year in MLS Cup. <laughs> um, I, I, at this point, um, I just don't see Colorado going to LA and beating LA in LA. That place is ruckus. BMO Field is nuts. Um, this is a semifinal of a competition. People will show up. It's at a good time for them to show up. Um, so I'm going LAFC on the west side. And then, I, Jordan, you know what? I'm going to switch it up. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go an underdog here just because right favorites can't always win. So I'm gonna go with the Philadelphia Union to beat Columbus Crew and knock them out. Um, I don't know. I just I got a good vibe from Philly right now. So that again we talked about this so many times that this Philly team, if they start playing well, they are a very good team and nobody wants to face them. And they've started to play well. So. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with trend here, and I'm going to say that they do it. Um, I think that they'll beat Columbus. I think they'll best one of the better teams in MLS. So you have LAFC Philly in a 2022 yeah. rematch yeah. of MLS Cup? Yeah. Wow. Um, Look, I sadly think we're getting LAFC versus Crew. What do I want? Colorado Philly sounds fun fun yeah (laughs) like that sounds like that would be a good time um so that's what i'm rooting for if i am rooting for anything on wednesday night i'm rooting for a colorado win and a philadelphia win to have two teams that haven't won a trophy in a while 
competing for it instead of the two like most recent MLS Cup winners facing off in a MLS Cup 2023 rematch. That just sounds boring to me. <laughs> like, I'm sure it'd be a good game because the crew and LFC are good teams. But when you look at like five years from now, and we're looking at who won the trophies in the 2020s, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, LAFC, crew versus LAFC, crew won that. Oh, and then Leaks Cup, crew versus LAFC again. That's funny. Uh, who won that one? Oh, crew did. Okay, that's that's fun. MLS Cup. LAFC beat crew. Okay, that's interesting. Like, I want more than that. Like, when I'm looking through this stuff later in life, regardless of how well the game is. Um, so that's that's my thought. I'm rooting for Colorado and Philly. I can tell you the last time Colorado won something, because I was watching that MLS Cup Finals 2010. Uh, Rapids beat FC Dallas. That was back when two West teams could end up being in an MLS Cup Final, and the I think the Rapids were the East Conference representative, even though they they were in the Western Conference. It was like this weird way that the, <laughs> that the brackets worked because of the uneven number of teams, and um, yeah, and, and Dallas lost uh, that one. Rapids won. That was like when they had Connor Casey, uh, legend. Um, that was a really good time. That was 2010. That was a long time ago since the Rapids have been really relevant. Uh, Philadelphia. Supporter Shield 2020. That's the last time. And then all these other Open Cup finals they've reached, MLS Cup 2022 final that they've reached. Uh, so that would be really interesting upset to get Rapids versus Union. That's what I'm rooting for. And uh, But I, like I said, I do sadly think that it's going to be LAFC and the crew and another rematch. But I was wrong before. I was wrong about Cincinnati beating the Union, so I'm hoping that this kind of is like another reverse jinx here and we get what I uh, want. And then the final is on Saturday. So, or Sunday, sorry, Sunday. And then we have other games on Saturday. Logan, if you had to pick a winner out of these four for the whole cup, who you got your money on? <laughs> not that you actually gamble right no i mean like, uh, who, who do you got it um i i i think lafc um they just seem to have the magic this year and we're still awaiting the arrival of their striker that's going to be one of the best strikers in this league so that's scary to think about right i i i just don't i don't know if philly can beat lafc um that's currently constructed so I'm not sure there's any team that can beat LAFC is currently constructed unless that name is Miami and Miami's not healthy. So I'm going to say LAFC win this one. Uh, I don't think Union get their get their payback because I've got them playing him. So, yeah, I'm going with LAFC, Jordan. What about you? I am going with the Columbus crew besting LAFC once again. And LAFC being like, Rrr. and then U.S. Twitter being like, oh, I told you, Nancy should be the man. Oh, actually, never mind. We're on Pochettino now. Yeah. As they completely dropped that whole Trundle of Nancy debate because uh, even before that, they were kind of like already running stale on that. They were like, oh, we're, we're, we used all the ammo of that <laughs> in that 5-2 defeat or whatever. Uh, and then there's a third place match as well. So, hey, maybe that's where we get Philly, Colorado, <laughs> um, unfortunately. But, yeah, so that should be fun. That is on Sunday. On Saturday, we do have some MLS Cup matches that we're going to quickly uh, preview for you here. Minnesota hosting Seattle at 630. That's on Fox. And, of course, MLS season pass. Uh 7.30, Charlotte, New York, D.C., Dallas, Miami, Cincinnati, Montreal, New England, NYCFC, Chicago, and uh, Vancouver, LAFC. That one's getting moved. They haven't updated that. That one's got to get moved. LAFC is not available to play. Um, That's weird. They had already removed... I think Phillies from the 
schedule here, and Columbus is from the schedule. It is strange, but I will say MLS is not the best at keeping their website up. Today. No, no, yeah. Okay, so that one's not happening. 8.30, Houston and Toronto, SKC Orlando, Nashville, Austin. 9.30, RSL San Jose. 10.30, Galaxy Atlanta, and Portland, St. Louis. So that's what we have coming to you. Next, that Philadelphia-Columbus game that was supposed to take place. Oh, yeah, I believe it was both of them. It moved to August 28th, so they will have to face each other right after again on the 28th. All right, and uh, let's let's talk the Pochettino news because there was actually an update today that they, they think that the deal should go through soon. Mm-hmm. Or as this guy um, put it, tomorrow or the <laughs> the beginning of, or the end of next week. I was like, that's a really big window. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. People don't know what they're talking about. Um, but I think Fox Sports just put out an article saying like, hey, they think this is going to be. Yeah, there's a couple of them that said that. I, I think the one I read was just, that was wild. That They're like, oh, it's going to get done soon. Early as tomorrow, but also the end of next week. I'm like, well, that's not soon. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. What is that? That'd be like me saying, well, it's going to happen. Maybe. Potentially. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, so what do we think? What do we think about this? I feel like this did come out of nowhere. I think there are some people pushing for this, but I thought it came out of nowhere. Um, But should it have? Because let's say Crocker went out and got Chelsea women's manager, Emma Hayes. That's a good point. And he goes out there and gets former Chelsea manager, Mercio Pochettino. Now, of course, he also knew him from Southampton, so there yeah. is a connection there that, that worked out pretty well. And I think, was it Twelman or somebody, said one thing that they like about Pochettino. I don't think it was, maybe it was somebody else, was that he has worked at big clubs, but he's also worked at clubs like Southampton, right. where Espanola. he didn't have as much... Yep to spend on the player so he knew how to work with what he got and that's that's what he has to do here yeah so there's a uh, there's an excitement jordan like you said he started uh his coaching career at espanol um then he was in with southampton then he was with tottenham which is not not necessarily a large club it's a big club but it's not one of the big heavy hitters um like you would have in the top four um and the premier league he's coached psg he's coached chelsea um He's won a French Cup and a Liga to own title. Um, he's gotten Chelsea to to kind of rebound a little bit. Um, it it probably Jordan is one of the best signings that they could have made. I'll say that. I I think what Pochettino does, he let, the players love working for him. They they've all loved playing for him. He's high energy. He's going to expect a lot of the players, but he knows how to develop young guys. And he he's always been quick to try to find guys the best situations possible for their playing styles. So I think this is a this he Jordan, he's arguably one of the best European coaches. I think he's had some tough run-ins with a couple clubs that aren't necessarily good clubs. You know what I mean? Like Chelsea's not run well. Like Chelsea. Yeah. Right. Chelsea's not run well. Tottenham's not run well. And when he like, started getting momentum with Chelsea, he was fired. Right. PSG was run well, and you saw what happened there. He took – people forget he took Southampton to new heights that they've never seen before. Like, he did an extraordinary – that's why he lands the jobs at, at Tottenham and PSG. Like, he did so well early on in his career, and he's get, he, he's so passionate. And, like, seriously, I, the more that I've thought about this signing, Jordan, I think this will go down as the time where U.S. men's national team finally hired somebody that – I think pushes them up to the next level of this team's very serious about where they're headed and the ability he has to be able to recruit young players, dual nationals, I think will come in huge. I think this is, this is probably a a perfect marriage and a not so perfect world um, for the U S men's national team. That's, that's how high I regard it just because I I do. I, I think, I think poach gets overlooked by how good he had been because of the bad situations that he'd gotten into. So I, I am, I was, when I got that news, Jordan, I was so excited. I was walking into work. And when you sent that to me, I was like, are you serious? Like, this is real. 
Like, this can't be real. Not U.S. men's national team. This can't be real. And they bagged one of the best European managers. Yeah, I mean, I have to hold my, choose my words here, I think. Because I did have another tweet about that too, right? Um, But it's, you know, Logan, this was such a big story. I couldn't believe a 16-year-old did not break this story. (laughs) (laughs) But the, the, what was so amazing about this, right, is seeing people's mind, like, break at it in the sense that they were they were so convinced that this job was not um attractive they were so convinced that we would not be able to get somebody like pochettino as manager of this team i don't it doesn't matter people see this job as attractive they do and it may not even be because of the player pool or anything like that it is a guaranteed chance to coach in the World Cup yeah. because it is a guaranteed berth into the tournament. And you'll be hosting it on home soil, like the, home soil for the team you're coaching. That is huge. People will go and want that job. It just is what it is. Plus, he has the you know um, repertoire with Crocker. He's worked with him before. Like, there's other things there. Emma Hayes could have talked it up. She just won a gold medal uh, coming from there. So this job was attractive. I, I, I was so beside myself when people kept trying to say it wasn't. Yeah, it. Uh, I, I love that you point out the fact that like all these things are lining up for Pochettino. And the excitement, Jordan, is going to be the highest it's ever been for U.S. men's national team. Like the, the energy he's going to be able to feed off of um, – how excited he's going to be. It's a different challenge for him, which I think is really exciting too. Um, usually coaches stepping into these new kind of situations that have the pedigree tend to to thrive, Emma Hayes. Um, and honestly, Jordan, they, their personalities remind me of each other. They're hard on their players. They get the most out of them, which we didn't get that with Greg. Greg was never going to be hard on players. Like that's just not his thing. Um, he's like the fun uncle. Pochettino and, and Emma Hayes are kind of that same breed where they're intense. They love their players, but they're going to make the decisions that are best for the club and the club going forward. And they're going to fit the style of play to the players that they have where Greg just thought, you know what, this worked at crew, it should work across the board everywhere else. And that's not how that works. So uh, again, I, I, like I said, and I don't, I try not to over exaggerate things, but this is easily the, biggest decision i think that's ever come down from u.s men's national uh the the u.s men's national team and the the soccer federation there like this is people just don't realize how big of a deal this is like how massive this signing is for the u.s men's national team yeah and uh you know tyler adams was saying on the men and blazer show he does with raj like hey we need somebody that is you know I forget what his exact word was, but it was pretty much holding them accountable. Yeah. Right. And also just see this whole weird thing with the way people are with Tyler Adams online now too, which is just, can we give grace to our players? Like I don't understand. Our team. <laughs> yeah. Like you know? they're like, well, uh, he wanted uh, Greg back. And it's like, no, they weren't going to come what out. Else is, see, right. What else? I mean, whatever. Like they were going to come out and say fire Greg. Right, right. And, and and anything you hear about them, like, petitioning Crocker not to hire Jesse Marsh and all that, has to be taken with a bit of a grain of salt. Like, I, I just feel like it does. Um, I don't think they but, like Jesse, yes, but I don't think they yes, were in their petitioning. Yeah. I mean, he, he worked with Jesse Marsh at, <laughs> yeah, at multiple clubs, did. and I think he, he does like Jesse. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, p- people have been real weird about Tyler Adams and players like Pulisic and, and stuff anytime they mention uh anything about managers or they're like, Oh, you're the ones that messed up. But guess what? Pochettino is now going to be the manager of the U S men's national team. And I'm sure you would take him over Jesse Marsh. I know I would. So oh, yeah. this is, this is what we got. And this is great. Um, so hopefully they work out the deal soon so he can be unveiled. 
it sounds like there's going to be a uh, interim for the September friendlies. I, I guess unless they can get this done quick. They said he likely would be on the sideline, but not actually. Probably like on watching. The yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But that would be hey that that'd be cool. It would. Um, we have the interim for for that. And you asked me, what, a few weeks ago when we were talking about it, like, what's the deadline? I said, I would like it by the September friendlies. We will technically have him hired by then. So that's great. Uh, And he'll be able to watch and learn and be like, okay, I see what I need to do with this team as he's watching it right there. And then hopefully going into the next set of games, he's able to really, you know, um, put a foot forward with it and, and make the changes he needs to do if he sees changes he needs to do. So I'm pumped up about it. Um. Yeah. All right. Any anything else before we head out? I don't think so. No. I'm excited. Most excited I've ever been for a U.S. Men's National Team. So I can't wait to see what you know. And 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 just kind of a a warning: you're not going to see the Pochettino style right away. You're going to see it in later windows. But just think about how hard this guy has um, coming into this. Right? He's got what a year and a half to get this team roughly. Um. Because once they hit yeah, a certain level, I have two right. years. Uh, probably like twenty months, right? We probably see him what debut in that Mexican international game or the friendly, maybe probably yeah. in October. So, I also saw people being like, "What has he ever won?" And it's like, look, <laughs> the Spurs curse is much deeper than Pochettino, yes. right? So you, you can't really go off of that. Plus, it's like, what did Greg won, right? Uh, until he became the U.S. coach when he started winning um, these CONCACAF tournaments. Right. So I'm sure Pochettino can win these CONCACAF tournaments. So we'll see how it goes from yeah. there. That nobody ever asked Pep what he had won. Well, he, well yeah, he won too much <laughs> at that point already. Right. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Pep was handed the Barcelona job from Barcelona. He was like yeah, a Barcelona a two manager, yeah. right? And become Barcelona one manager, right. and then he took off. So. Nobody ever asked that. It happens. Um, all right. Plus, it's like, we're America. Do we have a right to be picky? I know we want to win, but we're not going to win the World Cup. Dude, we so, were like, arguing over Wilfred Nancy, who's a good coach, and Steve Trundolo, yeah. who's a good coach, but not the European, one of the Europeans' best. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, that wraps us up. At Stateside Show on all of our social media. Let us know if you like the Pochettino hire in the comments. Uh, comments are now, I think, being allowed on Spotify. So you can also comment there if you're listening. Like and subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It helps more people find the show. Have a great rest of your week. We'll catch you next time when we talk about the League's Cup winner and the MLS Cup action that happens this weekend.